or to prepare for this video, I come to Alex Time Lapse workshop in Hong Kong to learn something about time lapse. I don't really do much time lapse anyway. This video is about shooting time lapse with Alex Time Lapse. Yes, that's his name. Alex Time Lapse is an award winning time lapse photographer originally from Spain. Make his name known with this stunning Hong Kong time lapse. In fact, this is a joint workshop with Brandon Lee as well. But this is not just about Alex's workshop. I'm coming out today with Alex as well. Look at that. Whoa, whoa. Yeah. What, where are you standing on? <laughs> wow, looking for some cool time lapse. Yes. We are trying to do a sunset with this almost two meters slider, uh, playing with perspectives, with sense of light, with movement. <laughs> I think let's try to catch everything in a 15, 18 seconds clip. Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> let's see. Actually, we have already shot something before this. Let's go back in time on the street. I mean, we were heading to the location, but then Alex just spot something that he just have to shoot it. <laughs> yeah, I think this is a very cool, epic street. And thinking in, in slider shot, wow, I think it will be epic to play with the perspective of these buildings, the flowers and finish showing this 70s style, so nice. <laughs> I just put a, a ND filter because it's daytime, I'm going to shoot in the sky. And I want to keep a long exposure uh, in this very nice shot. Let's see how how it will be. Now I will set up the, the slider uh, that, as you see, is very compact. It's, it's coming, everything is coming in in one backpack. I have here two trucks. This is what I love from this slider. It's like so easy. Working is pretty easy. You just attach here. That's it. <laughs> and attach the other one here. No problem, it's really working, very smooth working, perfect and you... So in theory, you just keep building it, you can just keep adding stuff on it. Yeah, yeah, if you want, I can show you. Like, if you, if you want, you decide to, to use more, you just can add another one more. Whoa, you got two more! Yeah, add, yeah, because uh, for time lapse, I love uh, very long tracks and this is the only system I ever found that I can bring two meters of a slider in one backpack <laughs> with my camera, with two lens, with filters. That's why I can be the real one-man band with this. Yeah. Yeah. One more, and it's so easy. Suddenly, now I have almost one meter and a half of slider. This, in the old times, if I want to go shooting, I just have to go with the backpack yeah, yeah. and with everything, like, oh, more easy, like this. sorry. This thing fit into hand carry luggage. Yeah, <laughs> that's why it's so good. Uh, in this shot, I actually will be okay with two trucks. Well, I have to say this video is sponsored by iFootage, but it is, this is really great. Anyway, and then this video is about uh, tips on time lapse. It's not exactly uh, AdWords or something. <laughs> <What job? laughs> yeah, many traffic, but also the traffic will be very cool for the time lapse. That's true. With this slider, I can set this position. You know? mm. I think it's okay now, but I, it's better to show with the motor because if you have the motor like this, you cannot get the pan. Like you get this horizontal point with the motor, you already get the correct panning. Mm. That's why it's quite nice. This, the, this is how I attach the pan and tilt head. Oh, see, this is the motor for the track. Yeah. For, for the tracking motion, this is the motor head. Yeah. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Wow, 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 that's really cool. My, my head is just like that much <laughs> from the car. <laughs> so you're thinking of getting some motion blur? Uh, yeah, of course. If no, no way to have a very nice effect. That's why uh, I'm shooting in the sky and actually it's a pretty uh, big uh, change of light from mm. the sky to here. But I trust in the dynamic range shooting in row with this camera. So you're trying to have the same exposure level? Yeah, I, I, I will shoot in manual, 
and I will menu. play with the dynamic range of these row files as well as I yeah, and I connect here is how you can charge your alpha cameras uh, with a power bank or you can connect an external intervalometer or in this case this is the included uh, cable from, from Sony and then you connect uh, to the motor here is the connection so now the slider will like control the camera to take a shot and then move and then take a shot and then yeah, move exactly. this is basically the difference with a professional uh, a time lapse device and no professional. Usually, the no professional uh, creates keep moving. continuous movement. Uh, this, no, this is will stop, uh, will, will wait, uh, will stop uh, to shot this yeah. exposure you want so that one. you can use slow shutter speed. Yeah. Something great about A7R3 is that you can still charge it. I choosing six seconds plus two to give room uh, the app to trigger the photos. Okay, then 280 for example. Okay. And then let's start shooting. We are ready for shooting. Let's yeah. let's go for it. Uh, once once I start shooting, uh, as you see, already we are doing the move shot move. Yeah. Uh, it's like very slow. You see, and now we'll move a little bit. Click. So six. now you are doing six second exposure. Every yeah. shot takes six seconds. Every shot takes six and seconds. And then the, oh, I saw the motor work. Uh, yeah. So the motor will wait after the six seconds yeah and with this we are doing a this long exposure is not creating any movement of the camera the camera we are making sure the camera is very static during this six seconds exposure yeah, yeah. i cannot wait to see the footage <laughs> you can you can see alex love time lapse so much yeah actually <laughs> i really love time lapse i'm a professional videographer but I love time lapse because it's the best way to show many many things in a very compressed time. This is how I did, how I started to do my Hong Kong time lapse. For example, my first idea was, hey, I know many 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 locations. <laughs> and when I bring, when my friends they come to Hong Kong, I love to show everything. But if I show in a video, I need maybe 10 minutes to show everywhere. Uh, yeah, yeah. But using time lapse is very cool. And I'll show in the same, and I can show in two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I say, wow, wow, I am quite addict. Especially to... in Hong Kong, there's so many things happening. Yeah. There's, a, there's a scooter behind me now. <laughs> okay, finishing. Oh, I like okay. that. It, it also got a countdown. Yeah, it's like two photos to finish and in 12 seconds uh, we finish the shooting almost like shooting film it takes time to develop these time lapse but you can see it now immediately now let's go back on the rooftop okay, here we are in a very rooftop as you see my face uh, the sun is very very strong yes but I have a big challenge. I cannot use a filter. Why? Because the shot will finish in a street at night time. If I start shooting with a filter, this last moment mm -hmm. with filter maybe will be 20 seconds exposure and I'm not planning to stay here the whole night. Then it's not a good idea to start with a filter in the middle of the shot take out. I have a big risk to move the camera and this can become in ruin the, the time lapse or just many 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 hours in post-production i will find a way to expose the sun without filter i think i will have to use a very fast shutter speed mm. but with this i can compensate the last uh, shots in the street let's try let's see crossing fingers again <laughs> okay. i will i will choose a uh, aperture priority the the a mode a mode and in this case i will take care in this automatic mode about this wheel. This wheel is showing the exposure. Right now, to have a right exposure, to don't break the highlights, I'm doing uh, two stops uh, under exposes yeah. to don't uh, overexpose the highlights. That yeah, is the yeah, most yeah. important when the shot in row. Yeah, sometimes I, I wonder that sunset and sunrise, time lapse, you have to use automatic mode, right? You uh, can't... Mm, yeah, uh, actually, this is a we can say uh, this is the easy mode to do a sunset time lapse. Yeah, we are using automatic mode that in this kind of shot looks like okay, we have uh, just the sun 
the sunset and the lights and the street will switch on at yeah, night. Yeah, yeah. But if, for example, we have suddenly in front of the camera will be a building with a very big neon lights in front of the camera, maybe because we choose this automatic mode, we can have problems. Even if you have some, some location where people is crossing in front of the camera, yeah, yeah, no, this mm -hmm. will ruin the Yeah, you the have to lapse. use manual. This is like some Jackie Chan's movie. <laughs> yeah, I always keep my hand on the welding. Yeah, 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 yeah I prefer too. to go behind the slider than in this water. <laughs> yeah, you two always keep your hand on the welding. Yeah, because I, I really, I really want to process this footage. Yeah. If I fell down, yeah, yeah, I never can see. Yeah. Then this trolley already have this is especially for the, for the course. The court is going past from here. Wow, this uh, fixed many, many uh, problems that became very big in a location like this. Yeah. The motor is not strong enough for pulling the camera go up at crazy steep angle like this. But there is a simple and clever solution. This solution also saves battery life for the motor. We can now attach even uh, two kilos and a half setup and will work perfectly. Uh, probably if you want to do even more vertical, you will have to add maybe more weight, but... There are the motors that are on, okay, we match, and now we are going to, to make a new movement. Okay, oh. as you can see, this is the counterweight is working very, very well, that's why. This is solution, very efficient. Okay. Uh, now, now we are shooting in, in, in four tracks, I use in four tracks. Then uh, we have to set the number of tracks in the settings of mm. the app to, to make understand, even you know, you can use it, wow, even 10 tracks, <laughs> this will be, can be crazy. I want to start the pan uh, from here, and then I want to finish. Dante. I'm selecting now the ending point. Okay. <laughs> Just enough. Oh. Just uh, enough. <laughs> so setting the is it the end point or start point? I already forgot. Point. This is the end That's point. the end point. Okay, I will start the shooting. So now the camera coming up to the starting point. Yeah, we start without filter. Uh, aperture priority mode. Uh, one peak every eight seconds because I know we will finish with six seconds exposure, and we need this is the room we need two seconds more uh, to trigger the photo and keep stop, mm. move, stop, six seconds, two to save, in the camera, move. Right, now is the game to follow the histogram. Very soon looks like I will pick the, the, the shadows. Uh, the shadows is in the left side of the histogram. Then I have to oh, you? over overexpose one stop huh? to compensate, and then I don't affect the shadows, and I have still the flexibility. Uh, I, I and I still have all the range. I can take at, and, as, and I can take advantage of all the dynamic range of mm. these profiles. I mean, after you change the exposure compensation, the, all the shot after that will suddenly. Boom, the, the exposure suddenly changed. Yeah, we'll be like, boom, uh, uh, a, a step of change. Uh, we have a software, actually everybody who already tried to do a sunset or sunrise, probably they notice they get a very crazy flickering. Yeah, yeah, even, yeah. even without changing the dial, changing exposures, each time you take a photo, the aperture yeah. is moving. Yeah. And this mechanical movement is not perfect, it's yeah, not yeah, exact. Yeah, 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 you yeah. will create different a little bit more exposure, mm. less exposure, and this is exactly the flickering you get. There is a program that is a great solution, uh, it's LR Time Lapse. Uh, this program makes uh, automatic ramping, or actually you set uh, a ramping, it's basically in a few words, it's a software you use uh, with Lightroom, and he calculates a very nice ramping from a sunny day, boom, to a, to a night long exposure shot. 
And if I change this exposure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shoo, it, I will make it. All. Will, it will smooth it down. Yeah. Wow. Very uh, long workflow, uh, but the effect, uh, the kind of shot I get, uh, is the only way. Yeah. It's yeah, the only yeah. workflow. And, but it's really, really nice. You will see. Secret trick for you. <laughs> not, not, so not so secret anymore. <laughs> Actually, it's, uh, you have to get used. You have well, to it, learn. It's, it's secret um, for me. <laughs> no, no. Oh, actually, you ha you have set a manual white balance. Uh, no, I, I don't care about the white balance when I'm shooting in RAW. Like it, it, actually, with uh, LR time lapse, as I say, I think it's a bit complex to explain, but it's about to select key keyframes. Does then, it does it also change white balance? Can I use like two different white balance? I settings? I will change. We are doing uh, not only a smooth change of light. We are doing a smooth change of white balance, <laughs> a smooth <laughs> change so of motion, and all together create this. I think I have to get that software. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to yeah. Still the batteries are very well. No problem. This is the work you have to do. It's not about to rest when you are shooting. You have constantly check the. Yeah the light and uh, you have the batteries there okay and we are going to finish in this kind of epic Hong Kong epic uh, yellow grid <laughs> uh, with a pound shop uh, neon light signal. Yeah. So let's have a look at the end result. A smooth change of exposure and white balance. We've got one last time lapse to show you. So today we are at another location. Last time was so hot. Yeah, it was like starting summer and like <laughs> today. Today is so oh, cold. Yeah, there's no way I can fake it as the same day. <laughs> okay, actually, it's not to complain. It's like 20 degrees. Okay, yeah. it was cold, but we can survive. So today we are in Danjo. Uh, today I will play with with a. Uh, with the ramping, I can choose from, from the eye footage up and I will do a horizontal shot but creating a tilt to show the IFC. I wish to get some this fog of these clouds. I will choose, I think, a six second uh, shutter exposure because for traffic and with all these lines, uh, cars going in many different ways, even work with a tunnel here, will be a very nice effect uh, with long exposure and at the same time creating this bang and tilt and a slight movement. Let's see, cannot wait. This two uh, very typical uh, gear, like everybody I think know, is a typical magic arm. And this is a clamp. It's used a lot in lighting, uh, for lighting, I know. Uh, this very low budget uh, gear uh, can be used uh, attaching to the slider and to one tripod. I found a very portable way uh, to make horizontal shots using only one tripod. One tripod, yeah. Oh, I see! Actually, I saw that. <laughs> I saw that in Alex's uh, workshop already. With a mirrorless camera, I really can hold pretty easily. I can make the shot, mm -hmm. and I don't need to bring uh, another yeah, big I like, tripod. That... I love that. I hate bringing heavy gear as well. Yeah. Uh, usually, uh, this time I will shot in manual mode, and the most important for motion time lapse, where I will have change of light in all the movement. I like to see first the exposure, the right exposure for the starting point. And in this case, I see. Uh, if I do five seconds exposure, I think I will choose actually six seconds exposure. Yeah. I have a, it's underexposed a one stop. I feel I will be, I will overexpose the highlights in the buildings. And I will see the last movement. I want to finish here. Here the exposure is right. I'm coming there, I'm starting with a underexposed one stop. And the last movement will be like right exposure. 
better go hit here and when the weight will go here we have a pretty solid system right now setting the starting point or we no control with bluetooth well, I still feel like, like at the end of the tunnel will be a bit overexposed. Okay, I think we'll be okay. Ending point, and then I go to the starting point. Everything, I like the location. It's raining a little bit. Maybe this will be even nicer for the time lapse. Let's see. Let's start. Here for takeoff. And let's running. In row, it's really. <laughs> <laughs> you you only like what you see on the screen. Yeah, already it's quite cool, really. <laughs> That's it. That's it. I cannot wait to see the results. But you don't have to wait. Let's see the final results. <laughs> So this is the final time-lapse. Honestly, this is eye-opening to me, for there are so many tools to help with shooting time-lapse these days. And they are not expensive at all. Shooting time-lapse is now easier than ever. The only thing that makes yours stand out is your artistic sense and creativity.